Hi and welcome everyone to the fourth video tutorial of the series image comparison. We reached the point where we can see if two images are equal or not. We can see if two images are not equal and find if at least they are similar. In the first video, we, we've seen if two images are similar, how similar they are, uh, comparing the... Okay, now, now I took examples, one original and a duplicate. So here we can see all the matches and we can define the similarity of the image based on a percentage of how many matches do they have. So for example, each image has 6,704 key points, 6,704 matches, so it's good, it's similar 100%. Only we were checking them one by one, so now I was checking with uh, the duplicate. For example, if I wanted another image, I will say blue filter.jpg and I will run again the code. And this for all the images. So now we want to automatize this process. Doesn't make any sense that I have to type them one by one. Otherwise, it would be faster for a human just to check them and watch. Is it similar or not? Uh, why is it so slow? Oh, anyway, let's, let's close it. What we're going to do now is to load at once all the images together and then make the script do the comparison. So instead of load loading only one image to compare we can delete this one we want to load all the images from this subfolder image uh, images uh, load all the images we need to import one library with which is called glob import glob and it's by default on python so you don't you don't need to start anything just type import glob and you will have it. With glob, we can do all images. It's equals to glob dot i glob, and we put the path name. In this case, it's just images slash and asterisk. Asterisk it it means to take all the files in the folder and that's all if we print uh, all images we should get all the path of the files in the folder and generate object i glob probably i need to put them in a loop for glob dot i glob images let's see this way for file in and then we print we print the name of the file print f let's see probably it should be this way okay yeah you, you can see that we get the path of all the files in this subfolder so all the images that i have in images we get it here images dot blue filter images dot blur and so on i put just images without putting the entire path as this Im uh, image folder I it's in the same folder where it's the python code otherwise you should put the entire path which is this one in this case and it will work at the same way just put one backslash before the asterisk and also r before so that python doesn't uh, i don't know the proper explanation so that doesn't consider the backslash like some other function uh, on the text just put always r before putting putting the path and we will get the same instead you will get the same path but it will work the same way so i will stick with my just yes, images folder this way and this way 
and we can go further now. So it will be all images to compare. It's equals to an empty array, and then we load the images one by one and put it inside the array. So it will be all images to compare dot append, and we append. First, we need to load the image, so it's image. It's equals to cv2 dot im read, and uh, the path. So it's f. This one we put it here and we load the image and then we put the images inside this array and so now we have all the images what now what now we need to execute all the code that we created before for one single image for each image so it will be for image uh, to compare in all images to compare and then we need to move this code farther pressing by pressing tab now let's move um, everything until im show and let's leave outside just cv2 wait kid and destroy all the windows image okay this is a typo image to compare and that's it we can run the code right now uh, in my case it's going it's going to be really slow because i'm also recording the video so the cpu is quite uh, heavily used right now I will wait at least for a couple or three images just to show that the code is working. And of course it's not showing the images because we will need to wait until the end of the loop so that all of them are processing in the way that we wrote the code right now but we are not going to wait that because it's going to take too much and also we need to improve the code but now we can see that it's working so it started with the first image and it says the match is good 68 percent and so on second image it's 89 percent but the problem is which image is 89 percent good which one is 68 we don't know so we should get also the title of the images the title of the images we can do it this way so once we load all the the path of the images we can also load all the titles so it can be this way let's see we can say titles is equals to empty array and then each time we add the title so it will be titles dot append title dot append f title dot append f and when we extract the images one by one we want to extract also the title so we have the um, we can do this way titles and I'm not sure if we can extract to our array like this way we have the function called zip to iterate more arrays uh, to it to iterate more arrays together so we put zip before and we extract uh, image to compare and title so we will have for example print title uh, and plus uh, title 
but also let's improve still the code. For example, <clears throat> for example, we don't want to show the images. We want just the Python code to tell us um, the title of the image uh, and how equal our similar is to the original. That's all. We don't want to show anything. So we can delete all this last part from CV2 destroy all windows to the first CV2 im show. And also we don't need the number of good matches. We're going to use the number of the good matches just to find the percentage. So we can also eliminate that. How good is the match? Let's call just similarity. And the percentage, we have now the percentage which is, for example, 85 point, and then there are maybe uh, 10 numbers after the point. We just want percentage and integer, just one number, 84 or 85 or 86 percent. We don't want like to be so precise. So we can convert this, all this operation here into an integer. So we can say, uh, let's make it more simple, like uh, percentage similarity, we will copy this one, uh, this operation here, and then percentage similarity, we convert it to integer, and to print it, we need to show it as if it was a string. So we will say similarity plus string as as tr, and we need to close the parentheses here after, and then we can add percentage. Also, this result draw matches. We don't need this one as we are not showing. Uh, any image anymore. Let's go here. We don't need to print how many key points has each image. We also don't need to print to the images are not equal. And here we can copy similarity. Uh, in this case, the images are completely equal. So we can say similarity but we will just say straight 100%. And also we can add that the um, equal size and channels also. And channels. Else we don't need this. Also the images have the same size and channels. We can still say that. Also here let's put backslash n, which uh, it means we will make one line, one free line. I don't know how, how, how to say it in English, that it goes like one free line. Um, it goes to the next line. Okay, the images are this have the same size and channels. Title. Now we uh, now it's clear. We we see that the images uh, uh, black and white is similar, sixty eight percent. The other one uh, eighty nine percent, thirty eight percent. So blue filter and blurred. Let's stop it now. As you can see, it's really really slow. 
it's really really slow and we can still improve so now we need to improve for what we can the speed and there is some way something that we can do for example we can take out of the loop the thing that we need to use only one time for example this shift algorithm the shift object we need it, we need to create it only once so we can take it out of the loop load uh, shift let's just say shift we create it on, we need to uh, create it only once so we can delete it because right now we are inside the loop so each time for each image we are processing all this code and so each time we are creating again the shift object we, which will take time cpu and memory so we don't want to have that if it's not necessary key point and descriptor of the original image we have only one original image so we need to do this only once so let's copy this one and let's load it only here after the shift the flan object this one we need to run it uh, okay we need to run it more times but we need to create the only object only once so we copy this one and we can move it here below and now that it's opt optimized we can run it and see how it works it's still a bit slow images have same size and channels now it should be faster for each image because first it load the original so title black and white similar to a 68 percent 89 percent 38 you see that now it's going faster because before it was loading the key points the script and look um, of both images each time now it's loading only the the ones of the image to compare of course for you it would be for sure much faster as i have to as most of my cpu is taken by the, the software which is recording the screen right now and it depends also the of the computer that you have We can still improve the code, for example, to give us more info. For example, we found in the folder 10 images to compare. So like we are now processing image one, image two, and so on. That's probably something if I decide to develop and make more video, we will see in the next video of the tutorial. For the moment, thanks for watching.